158 years ago today, in, the White, in this White House, President Lincoln was putting the final touches on his second inaugural address. And he wrote, let us strive to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, and care for him who shall have borne the battle. Today, 58 years after he bore the battle, we honor a true hero of our nation, Colonel Paris Davis. Right away, it was clear that Paris was a born warrior. He became an Army Ranger. Then he jumped at the chance to join the Green Berets, becoming one of the nation's first black Special Forces officers. I really volunteered for uh, uh, Special Forces when it became available. No one knew anything about Special Forces. And it was sort of a, uh, the way the president explained it was not in any detail. He just sort of gave you an inclination that it might be something if you, if you had the skills, you might be able to, to get in there and do some good. You know, in the early hours of June 18, 1965, Captain, then Captain Davis and his team with three of the Green Berets were wrapping up a job well done. And together, they just finished a 10-mile march through the night to support a company of South Vietnamese soldiers on their first combat mission a raid against the Viet Cong, thick in the jungle of Bong San. The raid was a success. But as the sun began to rise, the men heard that haunting sound ring out. A bugle, a bugle, a sure sign of a counterattack. Within minutes, the jungle lit up with enemy fire. Hundreds of Viet Cong began to swarm Captain Davis and his team, pinning them down in a rice paddy with no cover. It was just Brown, Reinberg, and Wall, and myself. And so, <clears throat> when, um, when Reinberg was shot, we got him up the hill with the help of one of the uh, uh, gunners on one of the other choppers. When Wall was shot, he was there, and I told you, he was in that, that buffalo rub where they uh, where he took those. He said it was only four rounds. I said it was five rounds. We only talked about one, but that, uh, that guy, that sniper was shooting his foot and his leg. And then there was uh, Brown, who was shot in the temple, who uh, wasn't quite dead when I got out to him. I can remember him saying, Am I going to die? And I remember saying, not before me. Captain Davis realized he was the last American standing. Without hesitation, he yelled, I'm coming for you. He called in friendly fire and gave a little bit of cover to run out and rescue his team. On his first attempt to get to team sergeant, Captain Davis was shot in the arm and had to turn back. Captain Davis waited for another window and sprinted back out again. But his team sergeant was stuck. Captain Davis couldn't fully break him free before he had returned return to cover. He didn't give up, though. That's not the Green Beret way. For his third time, as enemy fire rained down him, he ran out. Captain Davis freed his team sergeant, threw him over his shoulder, and started carrying up the hill to safety. Captain Davis got about halfway up the hill before a bullet pierced his leg. Then, in front of him, another Green Beret sergeant who had just arrived to the battle to reinforce the team was shot in the chest and now needed to be rescued as well. Captain Davis limped up the hill with his team sergeant on his shoulder. He'd been fighting for around 10 hours, but Captain Davis didn't hesitate. He went back down the hill to retrieve the reinforcement who had been just shot in the chest all 240 pounds of him. Next, Captain Davis ran to his weapon specialist who was struck in that cesspit. Viet Cong fighters continued to spray gunfire across the field as Captain Davis threw his teammate a rope, pulled him out and began to haul him up the hill as well. By this time, the rescue helicopter had landed. Captain Davis' commander gave him a direct order, get on board. Davis' response was just as direct. Sir, he said, I'm just not going to leave. I still have an American out there. 
He pinpointed the medic's position and began crawling toward him, with gunfire and grenades still exploding around him. The interesting thing was we started that thing with, uh, we could see the sun coming up. When we finished, we could see the sun going down. It was just the, the symmetry there, the, uh, it's, it's, it's really poetic in a sense. At the same time, you can, you can see the, uh, the similarities. It's almost like reading something from him away. Paris, you are everything this medal means. I mean everything this medal means. And look, you're everything our generation aspired to be. You're everything our nation is at our best. Brave and big-hearted, determined and devoted, selfless and steadfast. American, American. And this is not heroic. This is military. If you're in charge, you have to take charge. And the thing about it, if, it, if it's a battle like that, I used to have say this thing, and it, and it comes out of, of a book called, by Rupert Brooks, he's a English World War I soldier who was also a poet. I'm just gonna recite the first two lines that I always said. If I should die, remember only this of me, that some corner of a foreign field he used to say forever England, and I used to say forever America. 